Hello everybody, welcome to Level Pixel Level, and today I'm just going to show you how I use action constraints. I have two bones set up here, one called base and one called controller. I'm going to take the base bone and I'm going to right click on the location and I'm going to insert a keyframe. I'm going to go to frame 20, I'm just going to move this on the Y axis, doesn't really matter where, and I'm just going to insert another keyframe. So now I have this very simple animation. Again, you can find all these files on my Gumroad account, and you can follow right along with me as I go through this tutorial. Down here, I actually have a dope sheet open, and I've flipped it to an action editor. What this allows me to do is to rename this action. It's going to rename my action. Actions are how Blender stores animation data, and they can be transferred just like a texture to a material, and actually something that makes Blender really awesome compared to other 3D uh, animation packages. Let's change this now into a constraint though. So what I'm going to do is actually click this X right here to remove this action. Now I'm going to come to the constraint tab and I'm going to add a bone constraint and I'm going to add an action constraint. The target is going to be the armature and the bone is going to be the controller. I'm going to use the bone in, uh, let's do Y rotation and let's do local space. By default, it's in world space, and that means that any time the bone, the parent, or the rig, or the object move, it's going to activate. I want it to only activate when that bone itself gets value on the rotation. For the two action, I'm going to use my action. Now I started animating that on frame 1, and I ended it on frame 20. And for the target range, let's do minimum of 0 and maximum, let's do 90. So now when I grab the controller bone and rotate it on the Y axis, I'm actually activating that action. And I can do a lot of things like this where I can actually bake an animation into a rig. So this is a very simple example, and it may seem a lot like a driver right now, or a very restricted driver. So I can even key this now. So I can key this at 0 and move to frame 100 and type in 90. And now I'm activating that other animation with this constraint. Let's look at another example. Here I have something like this. A fairly simple animation, really easy to create, but let's say I wanted to bake this into the rig. I'm going to select on the first bone. Now I'm going to come to the constraint tab and I'm going to add a bone constraint and I'm going to add an action. And I'm just going to open up a dope sheet again down here. And I'm going to flip the dope sheet to action editor. I'm just going to rename this to my action. And the target is going to be the armature. And the bone is going to be controller again. Same name from the other one. This time I'm going to do X location and local space. And the two action, my action again. And I'm going to do start at 0 and end at 74. That's the end of that uh, cycle animation there. For the target range, I'm going to do 0 to 2. Now when I grab this controller and give it value on the x-axis, it's going to rotate that bone. The nice thing about an action constraint is it can be copied to all these bones without having to enter this information in again. So if I select all of these bones here and shift select on this one last and do control C and do copy selected constraints, I can do action. If you do control C and you don't see this copy attributes menu, you have to enable it. To do that, you go Edit, Preferences. Under Add-ons, type in Copy. And you're going to do Copy Attributes menu. Just turn that on. When you do, and you do Control c you'll have this Copy Attributes menu here. But now each of these bones have that action constraint with the correct range here. And now I can grab this controller, and I can drive that animation. Let's talk about one more use for this and more of a real world situation. So I have this animation. And I want to use that through a production hundreds of times. And I pretty much want to bake that into the rig. Now you could do it with drivers, but that would be a lot of drivers to maintain. And that'd be a lot of math you'd have to do to figure out how to activate that all exactly. The benefit to an action constraint is you can use the actual bones themselves to give it really nice animation and then convert it into an action. I'm just going to isolate these bones here. And let's add an action constraint. So it starts on frame 0, and it goes to about frame 50. So I'll just click on one of these bones up here. 
And I have this top controller up here called Action Driver that we're actually going to link it to. So again, I'm going to go to the constraints. I'm going to add an action. The target is the armature. The bone here is Action Driver. Two action is going to be the main action. I'm going to do the Y location, and I'm going to do local space. The start of the action is at 0, and the end is at 50. Let's do the target range of 0 to 10. Now let's just test it out first. So if I grab this controller up here and move it on the Y, it's going to activate that animation, which is great. Now all I have to do is copy it to all these bones. So I'm going to select them all. And I'm going to shift select on that top bone, the one that I added the constraint to. And I'm going to do control C, copy selected constraints, action. Now, when I move this controller on the Y, I'm activating that entire animation, which means that I can actually send this rig to an animator with that action applied. I'm just going to remove this animation from my dope sheet action editor, just so it doesn't ship and play automatically. Now, anytime an animator wants to access this, like say this ship powers up and goes through space and does some cool things, and now they can just grab this and power it down as well. It is an extremely useful constraint. Um, I use it a lot when I'm trying to pre-bake things into rigs exactly like this, like more mechanical moves. It's something I use a lot sometimes in a face rig, like on an eyelid. Uh, I'm going to be doing a tutorial on that coming up in the future where I go over how to do an eyelid with an action constraint. Anyway, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Big thank you to my patrons. It's because of you guys that I can keep making these videos. Uh, I really want to keep making content for you guys and keep putting it on YouTube as well for everyone to have access to. Anyway, talk to you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>